Welcome to our advanced group training uh, today, class number six. And today is going to be uh, kind of advanced training unplugged. So this is uh, this is not scripted. I asked last week uh, for some volunteers to present, and I had some brave souls who were willing to uh, to share their presentation with the rest of the group here this morning. I certainly appreciate that, and. And I've I've been clear with uh, with those who volunteered, and I know I said this on last week's webinar as well. But the idea here is that we can also uh, do some critique and and improve, and and that's that's why they're that's why they're brave. It's not just doing the presentation; it's that these folks were willing to to say, "Hey, I want to get better," and and uh, and so we'll thin slice their presentation. That will be beneficial for them, but I think it's also beneficial for all of us. I want you to hear that process several different times this morning of thin slicing. And when I say thin slicing, we want to break down some individual components of, of a presentation. And can we look at you know one phrase, for example, and is there a way that we could say that differently? Or is there a way that we could make a point differently? Or are there certain points that we're making that are not necessary or that could be made um, you know by sharing another story or another example or another scenario that's the kind of intention that I want everyone to realize really goes into developing and sculpting a great presentation and it's not something that happens overnight and it's not something that happens by chance or haphazardly it's something that's very intentional and so I'm, I'm very grateful to those who have been willing this morning to, uh, to, to share and, and, again, to kind of put themselves out there. Uh, and, and uh, of course, I think that they'll do a fantastic job. They've already had a lot of success in their business. And, and, um, and, and, and so, you know, I, I, it's not like we're starting from scratch. These are people who have practiced and who have developed a great presentation. But... You could have somebody who's been doing this for 25 years, and we could still break down their presentation and critique. And, and critique is not necessarily a negative thing. Sometimes we hear the word critique, and we think of that in a negative connotation. It's actually a very positive thing um, if we do it in a constructive manner. And that's what I want to. I want you to be able to hear today is some of that um, that process that's involved. In again, and I, the term I use is thin slicing, but in thin slicing a, a presentation. So, uh, so anyway, so I appreciate those who have volunteered. Thank you profusely to them. Um, I will say that uh, I finally did get uploaded our uh, last two sections. And again, I apologize. Uh, the last two weeks have been ultra crazy for me. But those are on that YouTube page. It's the same link that I've sent you uh, before. I will resend that uh, to you today after after this class, but you can go on and you can listen to the recordings of, of the last couple of weeks. I did talk to uh, Rachel Lawton, and uh, or I went uh, I texted her actually, and she gave us permission to use uh, use her presentation on the recording. If you'll remember, we were a little back and uh, I, I was unsure of whether we would do that. I did edit out the very end. Uh, where it had her contact information, but she said she was totally fine with with us using the rest of that on the recording, which I'm very grateful to her for uh, for being willing to share that last week. That was, uh, you know, again on the enrollment uh, presentation. Just kind of as a, a review here this morning, this employee benefits system is is I mean this is really the the bulk of what we've we've talked about and and poured over uh, throughout this advanced training. And it's this system that we keep coming back to. And, and I'll, I'll restate, because this is something that we've said many times before and we'll say it many times again, if you look at your business and you're not having the results that you're looking for or that you would like to have, it's always going to boil down to one of two things. You're either not doing something right or you're not doing something enough. And I would, I would guess that it's probably around 80% of the time that it's the latter, that it's just a, a lack of activity. And, and if you just increase your activity, you're going to start seeing a lot of the results that you're looking for. 
and I don't know if that's 80-20 or 75-25 or 70-30, but I, I really do believe that it's the, the majority and overwhelmingly uh, the majority of the time that it's just a, a, an increase in activity that is needed. Having said that, there are absolutely skill sets in this five-step system that do need to be developed and that should be improved. So I could be, uh, you know, writing business. I could be qualifying for executive director. I might even be a ring earner. And I look at my business and I say, you know what, there's some areas that I can improve in. And, and the minute that we stop thinking that way is the minute that we stop growing and progressing. So we need to be very careful uh, and always be open and coachable and teachable. That's part of success in life, not just this business. That this advanced training that we've been on, this process has been really about breaking down each of these steps and going through each of these steps and improving the skill sets that are involved in each of these steps so that our results can improve as well. So the presentations that we're going to listen to today, uh, we're going to have Mr. Mike Scott that share that is uh, sharing his decision maker meeting, and so that 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 portion is going to be very interactive. Uh, Mike and I, I'll I'll role play as the decision maker, and you'll just have to kind of use your imagination, uh, even though we're over the phone uh, or or via you know webinar this morning. You'll have to use your imagination and pretend like Mike and I are sitting down, uh, you know, across a desk from each other, or maybe at a board table with each other. And we're going to have a conversation of why uh, I ought to offer legal and identity theft as benefits, as voluntary voluntary benefits to the employees of my company. So I'll role play the decision maker. Michael role play the uh, the associate, and then uh, you know take some notes, and and I'll take some notes as we go through that information, and then we'll break down and and we'll go through and, and critique uh, Mike's portion of of that presentation. And, and Mike, you feel free to critique my my role as a decision maker as well. We'll critique the entire thing here this morning. And then we've got Miss Tracy Wright Owen, uh, who is going to present a an enrollment presentation. I'm really excited to hear uh, from Tracy. And so we'll do the same thing. That one won't be interactive. We'll just we'll just have her present. I'll. I won't necessarily be a part of that. With a decision maker meeting, it is a very it's conversational. So that's why we're we're doing that with two of us. But uh, Tracy, we're going to pretend like she's in front of a group of employees and she's presenting, and then we're going to critique her. And then uh, we are so privileged this morning to have Ms. Doris Frencha on, who's been plugging into this advanced training and uh, who is a dear, dear friend and, and an incredible leader in our company. Doris is a six-figure ring earner with the company. And I've, I've just asked her if she would do a presentation this morning, and she volunteered to do a presentation, but I've asked her if she'll do it a little bit differently. Instead of doing a standard 10 to 15 minute enrollment, um, we're gonna have, I've asked Doris, we're gonna have her do a quick enrollment, like a, like a four to five minute type of enrollment. And the reason for that is there are times where you get into a presentation, maybe it's a staff meeting at a school, or, you know, maybe it's a tabletop presentation, like at a benefits fair or something like that. And you don't have 12 minutes to do a presentation. You don't have 15 minutes. You don't even have eight minutes to do a presentation. How do you do a presentation that's only a, you know, four to five minutes? That's all you got. The principal of a, of a school says, look, uh, we've had some things run over. You've got five minutes. How do you structure that kind of presentation? So Doris has been uh, so kind to be willing to do that for us here this morning as well. But that's what we've got on the slate for today. Uh, so we'll start by, uh, again, using our imaginations a little bit. We're going to go to um, Ohio, to the to Toledo, Ohio. And we've got uh, Mr. Mike Scott standing by. So Mike, um, let's, let's maybe set this up a little bit. Uh, is, is there a type of group that you've kind of envisioned, um, either industry type or employee size or both? Or does that matter to you? you? You tell me kind of what we're what we're wanting to establish here. Yeah, no, that that doesn't matter as much as um, that I've tailored this to this being a quasi warm lead, and by that I mean 
you and I haven't met other than by phone, but I've been uh, relayed to you by a mutual acquaintance that we both respect. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm a referral then, and, and, and so this is the first time that we're meeting. And let, let's just, for the, for the uh, sake of setting this up then, let's say that I've got uh, 55 employees. And, um, and, and we'll say that it's uh, you know, kind of a mix. I've got some office people and some blue collar employees. When I say blue collar, some, uh, you know, some warehouse employees, we'll say. Does that, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, that's part of my question. Oh, well, perfect. Then I am, I am uh, jumping ahead that I will no, let you fine. do your thing. And, and that's good. And, and go ahead and ask that because I want to I wanna answer that in, uh, in, in our role play as well. Okay, cool. I will I will let you come in then and and uh, and welcome welcome to my office. Well, good morning, Mr. Richards. Thank you very much for uh, having me. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me today. Thank you also for caring uh, about your employees enough to take time out of your busy schedule. Um, absolutely, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Go ahead. Great. Do you do you mind if I call you, Mike? Yeah, of course. No, absolutely. All right. That's fine. That's that's great. Um, you know, as I mentioned on our phone call, uh, we have a mutual friend. I uh, met your brother at a conference, and he suggested that I get in touch with you. He even said that you were a great guy. <laughs> well, if you met my brother, I'm sorry uh, about that. But no, no, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, and yeah, he, he said he enjoyed meeting you as well. Yeah, those family relationships, uh, you know, when you, when you talk to brothers and that, you're never sure what kind of a reference you make, right? So. You know, I see, uh, I see on your desk there that uh, you've got you've got quite a family. It looks like you've uh, they're all at pretty fun stages in their life. Absolutely, yeah. These are our five kids, and so we've got sixteen all the way down to five. And you can see, you know, our oldest is a boy, and then four girls. So we 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 did okay on him, but then we really figured it out and got those four girls. <laughs> so I would imagine that he's probably driving here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got his permit right now, and. We've, uh, you know, we've alerted everybody to, to, they're probably safe on the road, stay off the sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've got a product that'll help you with that as well, so. <laughs> okay, good, yeah, tell me. <laughs> do, you mind, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Um, go ahead, please. All right, and, and also, do you mind if I take some notes? Of course, no, please, okay. absolutely, and I'll do the same. So, um, you know, I've, I've gone out on the website and I've taken a look at your company and I see that you're, you're kind of a manufacturing concern. Um, do, do you have a niche market that you guys work in? Um, not really. I mean, you know, we, we do have, uh, you know, clientele that, that, that we focus on, but part of our growth strategy is we want to grow. We want to expand that. Okay. And so, so, uh, tell me a little bit about your employees. Uh, I would imagine in manufacturing, it's a little bit of a mix as far as uh, what your employees do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got, uh, I think we're at 55. That's our full-time count. Uh, we do have a couple who are part-time as well. But, um, you know, the bulk of those, about 30 of them are, are warehouse guys. They're working down there. And we do uh, two different shifts, so we've got a morning and an evening shift. That morning shift comes on at, at 7, and they're here till uh, 3, and then we've got the evening shift that comes on at 2.30, and they're here until uh, 9.30. Okay, so you run two shifts then? Correct, yeah, and they overlap just by that 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but that, 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 you know, lets us keep going. Uh, okay. we, we, we had a night shift at one point, but it just created more headaches when we have to get management in here and, and all of that. So we just have the two shifts right now. And then we've got, uh, you know, our office folks up here as well. Um, and I've got, uh, uh, let's see, four guys right now that are doing sales uh, for me. And, and we've got, you know, AR and admin and, and uh, the rest of our office folks. Sure, sure. Well, um, Mike, so what kind of uh, benefits do you offer them today? So we've got um, we've got our our core you know health and and uh, we we have a new vision plan this year that we just that we just brought in. Um, we've got a dental, but the dental we pay for the for the employee on health, and then we we actually subsidize their family as well. 
Well, the vision and the dental, that's if they want to pay for it, then they can. But we don't cover the cost on those. Well, heck, maybe I need to come and work for you. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we try to. We try to take good care of them. And that's one thing that we're that we're proud of is that, you know, we've got guys that have been down that warehouse for 15, 20 years. And, um, you know, so yeah. we, we, uh, we like to keep them around and, and take care of them. Well, that kind of leads me into, into my next question. And that is what your turnover looks like. I mean, uh, it sounds like with that kind of a benefit package and the longevity that you just spoke to that, uh, your turnover probably isn't all that high. No, it, it, it is especially for our industry. I mean, that's one of the things that we're proud of is that we have, uh, we have pretty low turnover. And I mean, of course we have some, but, well, uh, but it's pretty low. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that's, that's not the norm of what we see out there. So, you know, generally turnover is pretty high, especially uh, in this kind of a job market. Uh, so this, that's a real testament to uh, how you're treating your employees and, and that they feel valued. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, Mike, I've given you a packet uh, with some information about our services, and I'm going to be real frank with you. I'm not going to go over that in minute detail today. Uh, you're an intelligent guy, and you'll be able to see the products in detail uh, when you want to take a look at that. But what I'd like to talk about today is what the services mean to you as an employer. So, you know, Mr. Richards, we're, we're here to help you. Uh, first, let me tell you that with the benefits that you offer today, you surely like to take good care of your employees, and 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 that's that's quite a testament uh, to you doing your job as well. Um, Legal Shield would like to help you enhance that offering. Uh, this is a way of showing your employees that you really care about their everyday life situations that occur. And I've found that even those employees that don't purchase our products are happy that you care enough to keep them informed. So here's how we help you, and by helping you, we help your employees. We're able to keep your employees at work doing their jobs. We cut down on absenteeism, and we give them peace of mind by reducing their worries and keeping their head in the game. So I think you'd agree that when your employer faces even a minor legal issue, that they don't leave it at home. They bring it to work with them, and it's on their mind all during work. Most employees will talk about it with their fellow workers. They'll ask them who they know and who they should call. They'll fret about it all day long for days. Uh, and this only cuts down in their productivity, but anyone that comes in contact with them. So presentism, and I'm sure you know what that is, Mike. Um, that's a daily occurrence, uh, whether we realize it or not. Uh, you want to be sympathetic to their situation, but you don't want productivity to suffer. And I'm sure you've seen these situations play out with your employees. Yeah, for sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. So this becomes even more of an issue if the problem is a bigger legal problem or if the employee is suffering an identification theft issue. Uh, these problems can become almost paralyzing to your employees. Things like wage garnishments, landlord disagreements, appliance and auto warranty issues, divorces, traffic tickets, auto accidents, they all weigh heavy on that affected employee. And we assist in all of these situations. We can provide your employee and their significant other with an annual will or a will update at no additional cost. Mike, do you know how many people what percentage of people don't have wills out there today? I don't, but I mean, I would imagine it's, you know, pretty high. It is. It's, it's 60 to 70 percent. And the problem with that is, is that um, in probate states, such as we're in, in here in Ohio, if you don't have a will, the court's going to decide where your assets go, and they're going to decide where your kids are going to be raised. So it's really important for your employees to have that last will and testament. And included in the packet uh, that we do for them at no additional cost is a last will and testament, a healthcare POA, uh, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> power of attorney. I always have to remember that people don't always know what POA is, a living will and a minor trust. 
uh, you know, the value on this ranges from 700 to 1500, depending if it's an individual or a family. And again, that's at no additional cost to the member. So with, so, you know, help with our services is only a phone call away. Within four hours, most times less, your employee will be in touch with an attorney that specializes in their specific problem or issue. When's the last time a lawyer returned your call in four hours? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm pretty good friends with with uh, with our attorney here that we use. So. Your corporate attorney, right? But yeah. but if you if you had a legal issue and you were calling into a legal office, uh, somebody that you didn't know, do you think you'd get a return call in four hours? Um, probably not. Yeah. Probably not. not. Yep. Yep. So yeah, and also, do you think this would optimize their time at work? Um, yeah, I mean, I could see, I could see what you're talking about there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got a, I've got a kind of a, a funny and interesting story and it, and it ended up working out real well. Uh, but there's a lady that uh, lives here in Ohio and she and her extended family, 10 people in all, uh, reserved a houseboat for two weeks down in Florida. You know, they've been planning this vacation for years. Uh, they flew down to Florida and when they arrived at the rental place, they were told by the owner that he'd rented the houseboat to somebody else because they were willing to pay more. To add insult to injury, he informed them that he didn't have any other units available, and he told them that they'd have to find somewhere else to rent. So, you know, they pleaded and pleaded with him, and he just wouldn't change his mind. Can you even imagine the amount of disappointment uh, anger? Terrible. Yeah, and the angst that she had. I mean, yeah, it is absolutely terrible. I, I can't even begin <clears throat> to fathom what she was going to. Well, add to this, she had several young children with them. There was four adults and the rest were kids, and they ranged from 13 down to five. Uh, so, you know, you got all these kids now that are all, all disappointed as well. Well, what she did is she pulled up our app on her phone, and she hit the emergency line. And it immediately put a call into Legal Shield, and she was put right directly into an attorney. And that attorney then, in turn, called the owner. And he reminded the owner that in Florida, it's trouble damages. So if he's found negligent in this, he would owe them three times that amount. He also told the owner that they would report him to the Better Business Bureau and that they'd also report him to, this, to the state attorney general's office. Well, the end result is that her and her family had a wonderful vacation on their original houseboat. And here's the kicker. The owner, owner personally became their guide. So he, he took the two weeks and took them all around this huge lake <laughs> down in Florida. That's right. Yeah, that wasn't part of the package, and, and there was no additional cost to the member uh, to have him along, nor to have that attorney make that phone call for him. Now, would she have been able to find an attorney without Legal Shield? Yeah, probably. But at what expense and how much of her vacation time used without that houseboat? Right, yeah. So, you know, as emotionally draining as, as legal issues are for your employees, identification theft can and is devastating, can be and is, is devastating. So the victim, the victim feels violated and always wonders how it happened, right? I mean, you've, you've probably had uh, a credit card that's been uh, reissued because of some kind of uh, a breach. And, and you always wonder why and, and how they got that information. So, right. can, you know, can you imagine what it'd be like to have your social security number being used by somebody else? You know, how would you get that straightened out? Yeah, you'd have to call the government to get help. And, you know, how many calls would that take? How many hours would you be just on hold? Um, you know, 70% of identification theft today is, is non-financial. So, you know, it's an inconvenience to have your, your credit card have to be reissued, but that's taken care of relatively quickly. You know, within a week to 10 days, you've got a new card, and you're back up and running, and you've kind of forgotten about it. But somebody steals your social security number. 
man, that that that's a real hit. Or you know, they get they they use your driver's license information or your medical card information. So um, you know, and the problem with all this is is that your other employees are affected. You know, they have to cover that uh, a person's time and and workload. Um, right. The chances are that person's going to have to take time off. And if they don't take time off or they don't have time to take off, they're going to be doing it while they're at work because this is a nine to five proposition. You know, you can't get a hold of these government offices or for, for you know, even on a financial aspect, you can't get a hold of, of other places generally after business hours. So, and the other thing is, is that, you know, unlike our judicial system, you're really guilty until you're proven innocent. So they lose, you know, their comfortable sense of security. They feel violated. Most times to the point of being paralyzed if this is a big enough problem. And, you know, what do I do now? How do I get it resolved? Uh, will I ever get my life back? What happens if it happens again? Um, so, you know, as your other employees become affected with this as well, you know, there's, there's um, a certain amount of resentment and feeling put upon, and this can lead to morale problems for for the victim and the coworkers. And you as the employer, now you've got additional problems. You have to pay overtime, soothe hurt feelings, and all this for something that the employee was not even responsible for. So, you know, the pressure builds. We give employees security. And security and knowing that we have their backs as well as their family and are monitoring all of their information. You know, most importantly, we're the only company that fully restores their identity. We also promise that we will restore their identity back to the point it was before it was stolen. Again, we're the only provider that has this offering. We have certified private investigators that work for and with the member to get their lives back together. We don't just counsel you on how to do it. We do it for you. So as I stated before, 16 million people lost their identity last year. This number is rising year over year. And just the Equifax breach alone left two thirds of the adult population in the US with their information exposed. Since 2005, there's been over 4 billion, that's billion with a B, pieces of information that have been hacked from thousands of different databases. You know, in my opinion, in the opinion of others, is no longer a matter of if, but when your identification is going to be used by somebody somewhere. Kind of a scary thought, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. now it is. Yeah. So we provide the services to your employee as a voluntary benefit at group rates through your company that come right out of their paycheck. There is no cost to you, and of great importance to you is that every employee cannot use Legal Shield against your company ever. Even if they leave the company and decide to sue you later, they can't do that. And there are also family coverages as well that will cover their significant other as well up as up to 10 children. So you need to get busy. You only have five. <laughs> yeah, good. So, you know, Mike, my, my, my question to you is this, is can we help you maintain the productivity and morale in your organization while we offer the opportunity for your employees to be protected from everyday life events? And, and how much is it for them? Sure. Well, we do group rates, Mike. So um, because they're coming in under you, uh, they can get a group rate. It's it's eighteen ninety five for Legal Shield, and that's if they're uh, a family or or an individual. I'm sorry, I, I said that wrong. It's eighteen ninety five for Legal Shield, and and that's if they're a, a family or not. And uh, with the family ID shield, it's eighteen ninety five, and the individual is eight ninety five. But we offer a bundled rate, and that's thirty three ninety for the family, 
and that gets them both legal shield and ID shield, um, or the individual one is $27.90. Now let me tell you, Mike, that comes down to just a little over a dollar a day for the for the family one. I mean, a dollar a day for that kind of security. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. So, Mike, do, do you have regularly scheduled employee meetings? Um. Yeah. So we have. Um, we don't have a meeting where all of our people get together. You know, we have the warehouse. We do. Um, we, we call them uh, we call they're not they're safety meetings we call them something different but anyway we do that once a month we're required to but then you know our office I mean we might do might pull people together to to go over information we do have uh, once a year that we go over their health and um, so what you know I bring in the health rep and and they go over with the office and then um, we just we just send that information out to the warehouse guys. Sure, that that's probably part of your open enrollment kind of situation. Correct. Yeah. 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 The uh, the thing that we like to do with this is because it's so timely and and because there's so much happening out there that that are putting your employees at risk, is that we we like to get in fairly quickly, and and get these services in front of them so they can make a decision so that they're protected right away. So if we find that we wait for open enrollment, um, sometimes you're going to get people that are caught in the middle. And unfortunately, for most things, we can't go back and, and write a previous problem if they're, if they're not a member. So, you know, I envision that we probably would do this in, in probably three different meetings. Uh, one would be for your office staff. And then the other two would be for uh, just before the shifts begin. Uh, for your production workers, does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so um, you know we can we can do a couple of different things as far as the staff is concerned to kind of ease the problem a little bit, and I can do a lunch and learn for them. Um, so I can come in and provide lunch for them, or even a breakfast and you know breakfast briefing kind of thing, where I can bring in some breakfast foods and and uh, be able to sit down with them and talk about that. Are your meetings are generally are they mandatory um, for the uh, for the warehouse? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. we we okay. do. They, they they are mandatory. I mean, you know, if someone's sick or something, we do yeah, have a yeah. sign sheet though that they're supposed to sign. And I mean, that's we're required to to get to do a mandatory meeting. So sure, and, and they they do a pretty good job of being there. Okay, so well that's great. In, in your office staff, kind of the same way. Um, you know, our, again, our office staff, we don't really have a meeting set up, but it, but you mentioned a lunch, you know, if we were to do a lunch and learn, I think we get pretty good turnout. They, they, they don't mind plugging in. We just don't have it where they already are together. Sure. Like sure. We with the warehouse. Well, and again, we, we find that even, even those that, uh, only have a mild interest and, in, and if they don't take our product, they're still really happy to, to learn about the information. So I do a, I do a presentation on identity theft and that's generally how I start out with it and right. then then get into detail but uh, it's an ever-changing landscape so I've always have a, a lot of new material to talk about uh, even if they may have seen a presentation like this in the past so sure well uh, do you mind if I pull out my calendar I'm um, sure yeah, go yeah. Ahead. so why don't why don't we take a look at some dates here uh, that that might be good let's let's start with your office staff first and uh, because they're the ones that that are probably going to be dealing with this from the um, you know the uh, standpoint of a payroll payment out of it and that kind of stuff and so we want them probably to be real educated before they would start getting some phone calls from some of the production workers on, on how it might work on your end does that make sense yep okay and so, so is then this something that we would set up then mike as a as a payroll deduction Oh, you know what? That that tends to be the most popular way that everybody does it, and it also um, more of your employees are going to sign up for it if if they're on payroll deduct, okay. and and that's important to you because you want them protected, right? You're not, you're not going to have me come in 
um, and offer a service to them that, that you really don't want uh, or think that's of value to them. So uh, this, this helps show an increased value for that product. Okay. All right. Okay. So then at this point, I would look at some dates with you. And, yeah, and then, perfect. Yeah. Hey, uh, listen, because everyone is muted, we're not going to be able to have a round of applause for, for Mike Scott here and his presentation. But, uh, but trust me, we'll have to I, – I wish that we could unmute everyone, Mike, just so that you could hear their, their appreciation. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic, and, um, and I want to thank you so much for – for taking time to go over that. I'm just going to put here one more note. And I filled up two pages of notes of things that I want to go through, uh, which frankly, I probably would have had more, but I was trying to answer your questions too. And I found that that was more difficult than like with an enrollment, I can just write. <laughs> so the more I had to interact, the more I'm like, wait, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to take notes here. But, uh, but two pages of notes that I want to go through. But, but first and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it was absolutely fantastic. Um, the, one of the notes that I made, and this is just kind of a general overall comment, is how confident you really are. And you, you, and I don't, you know, I think that that is genuine. But even if there are points of that, Mike, where maybe you weren't as confident, it was not, it was not evident at all, and you, it felt like you were very confident throughout the the, uh, the entire presentation. So, I don't know if maybe some of that's fake it till you make it, or if it's all just you're really comfortable with with this uh, this material. But it came off as if you were a seasoned veteran an old pro, and just, again, not just confident with the setup and sitting down in front of a decision maker, but confident with this material as well. It's obvious that you've taken time, that you've really worked on your scripting, that you've worked on your language, and uh, and so that's a that's a compliment, but I'm telling you, it, it, it's 100% true. Well, thank you, Mike. Yeah, what, one of the problems that, that I had as I was doing this was not being across from you because yeah. you read body language and, and you play into whatever that body language is telling you. And, of course, I couldn't do that. And, and a couple of times you responded and I kind of talked over you. And that, that was only just because um, I wasn't ready for the response because I couldn't see you. So. Well, and, and listen, um, that was my, that's my next comment here is, it is impossible to, uh, to, to recreate over the phone what you would really have in a face-to-face -face decision maker meeting. Now, now you, you were 10 out of 10 on, on, on the effort there to try to recreate that, uh, but you're 100% right. I mean, the, you cannot read body language over the phone. Um, there are times that you, I think you probably would have asked an additional question. Mm -hmm. um, be, you know, based on a response or a lack of response or a short response or a longer response or a facial expression. Um, but, but again, we're over the phone. We're just trying to role play this this morning and, and not all of that is possible. So yeah, and but, I, might but, have done, I might have done the close a little bit different had I uh, seen facial expressions that was telling me that that wasn't the time to close. Right. So yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm but I'm close. glad that you went for it. Now I'm, I'm, I, and, and I think that, uh, I think it was the right thing to, to go for it. So let, let me just break down the, the timing of it. First of all, we started about 1045. These are central times that I jotted down. 1045 start, there, were, there was about five minutes of rapport building. And, and, I, and I might have overestimated that a little bit. It might have been 1046, I forgot to look, but I'm guessing there are about, uh, about four to five minutes of rapport building. At 10.50, I made a note that you started into the actual presentation of product, and you started there by asking some questions. I'll come back to that. And then we close at about 11.07. So our time is really right on. I mean, if you, if you count the entire thing, we were at 21 minutes, maybe 22 minutes. So our time is perfect there. I mean, we're, we're not uh, you know, taking forever. That's something, I mean, even if Mike had asked for a 15-minute meeting, 
that I think would have still been very appropriate, even if even though we went 21, I think it was fine. I think our timing was was actually perfect. It was it was more than fine. It was perfect. It did not feel like it took a long time. In fact, when I looked down to jot down the closing time, I was a little surprised that we had already that it was already 11:07. It felt like it it was only about a, a 15 minute overall. So um, so that's good. That's a that's a great thing. I want to break down the uh, the uh, first four to five minutes where it was kind of rapport building. Notice Mike started with gratitude. He was thanking me for my time, thanking me for, for seeing him. I think that was good. A very professional move. Is it okay if I call you Mike? Um, I, I thought that was fantastic. Notice he's talking about my family. And again, we're role playing that. So that would happen a lot more organically if he was really in my office. And, and if he saw a picture of my kids, he would have to com com comment on it because they're just that cute. And so that would happen organically, but <laughs> but, uh, but I, I appreciate you being intentional about that. One of the greatest things that Mike did, and every personality type is different on this, but one of the greatest things that Mike did here during that rapport building is when I tried to make a joke, notice he intentionally laughed at that. And even though it wasn't that funny of a joke, he, he was laughing. Now, it wasn't over the top. I didn't feel like it was fake at all. It felt very genuine and authentic. But but that's a great compliment. If you've got somebody that's trying to be funny, give them that. Laugh at laugh at their humor, even if it's not you know that funny. And and again, don't don't overdo it. Don't be fake about it. But uh, but but uh, but again, I think Mike did a, a great job at that. He then got into questions. And, and you know what? I apologize. Uh, the questions were part of that four to five minutes, um, which which is perfect. I think that that's the way that it really ought to be. And notice that he asked me about uh, my employees. You know, tell me a little about your employees. I did. Told him about the warehouse staff and the office staff. He, I'm sure, was taking notes, even though I couldn't see him. He was taking notes at that point. Um, he asked me about the employee turnover. Mike, any thoughts on that? Is that a common question that you typically ask? Yeah, it is because it because it leads into uh, if I find that they've got a high employee turnover rate, um, I make sure that I mention in my presentation that this is a way to really cut down on that because these folks may be having problems that you're not even aware of, and all of a sudden they're they're getting disciplined for it and they're kind of half out the door on you and you don't even know what's going on. Yeah, that's good. I I think that that's a good question. It's fairly safe, in my opinion, because, like I said, you know, we, we have really low turnover. Then you just were able to turn that into a compliment. Yeah. And if I had said that we have, you know, decent turnover, then at, at worst case, it's neutral. But what makes the question a great question, one of the things that makes it a great question is, is it safe or is it a question that's going to backfire? And that's absolutely the case in an enrollment with employees, but it's very much the case in a decision maker meeting as well. So uh, that's a question that I've not really used before, but I like it. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a safe question. And again, you know where you're going to go, uh, you know, it, regardless of, of how the answer comes back to you. So I like yeah, that. A follow up that I do to that, if they tell me that their absentee or that their turnover is high, I ask them what the common problems are that make it, or what the common situations are that make it a problem. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then from there, you know, you can you can either weave that into your presentation or just say, you know, that that's I'm hearing that as a as a common issue um, across all employers that turnover rate is really high. Yeah, that's really good. That's good. That's good. So that so that they're not feeling singled out. I really like that. The third question that Mike asked was the benefits. Tell me about your benefits package right now. Um, you know, one thing that I'll, I'll point out there, I think that, that I think you handled that great. Notice that um, I mentioned that there were, I didn't use the word voluntary, and I was playing the role of a, of a, um, of a business owner. 55 employees, the business owner still might be the one that's kind of overseeing you know, some of that HR administration. 
uh, 55, I might have an HR director at that point, but I was playing the role of the business owner. A business owner is going to say things, but not quite with the appropriate HR language. If I had been an HR director, I would have said, uh, you know, these certain benefits are voluntary, the other are not. But a, a, an owner is not always going to use that language. And so we have to be able to listen and we have to be, be able to identify uh, when I say that I'm offering dental and vision, but that's uh, we don't pay for that, Mike is translating that into, okay, so they offer voluntary benefits. They're open to offering voluntary benefits, which is a good sign. If I had said we pay for everything and there was nothing voluntary on the table, Mike could have added to his presentation, not necessarily right then, but maybe later on, he could have added uh you know, something about why voluntary benefits are good. They help attract and retain quality employees, and, and they do it at no cost, no direct cost to uh, to the employer, which is one of the notes that I'll share with you just here. That's something that you could probably drive home a little bit more, Mike, is that this is no direct cost to the employer. And, and again, any uh, any kind of critique like that, I realize this is conversational, and um, and 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 that's something that you may may very well normally and typically add in, but but I do want to make that point. That's something that you could that you could be stronger on, uh, especially to a business owner. That this is no direct cost. This is this is nothing out of my pocket, which is I great. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, again, I I like how he asked, "Is it okay if I take notes?" I like how he was complimentary during that portion. I think that was great. Um, he used a line at the as he started to get into coverage a little bit, and and that's something um, that I think would have happened naturally, re, uh, depending on what kind of tool you're using there. If it's a proposal or if it's a brochure, the transition into coverage, uh, I, I didn't follow it exactly, and of course some of that I'm taking notes back and forth as well. But I, but I think that that transition would be a little bit more marked if, uh, you know, if we were face to face and I was looking at a tool, because I'm assuming that at that point, Mike, you would have brought out a brochure or something and actually pointed to the page. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, I, I, that's something that we're not going to have, you know, on a on a phone call where we're role playing. But I do want to point out that that transition does need to be there that the business owner or decision maker understands that we're getting into what this is going to do now for your employees. And, and Mike, you said that, but I think that that would be accentuated even better with, you know, if we, if you and I were actually face to face and, and you're pointing at something, that visual component would have been there as well. It also would have maybe been a little bit more clear to me if I had not been trying to furious, furiously write notes <laughs> while you were talking. Um, but you, you said a line at the beginning of that, that I thought was really good. You said, um, I'm happy that you care enough for your employees. And I jotted it down and I didn't get the exact language, but but any kind of sentiment like that, um, this is going to show that you care about your employees. Uh, your employees will be happy that you care about them. Any kind of sentiment like that is a positive thing. It really is. 99.9% .9 of the time. And if you've got the 0.1%, uh, then, then it's not somebody that you really want to be meeting with anyway. And, and I remember Brian Vahili went into a decision maker meeting one time, and he got about halfway through and talked about how this is going to, you know, really help his employees. And then the owner, the business owner, said, "Wait, hold on, just one second. You're telling me this helps my employees?" And Brian said, "Yeah, it's going to help them a lot." He said, "I don't want to do anything that's going to help my employees." And Brian said, "Well, then I think we're done here." <laughs> and, and he just left. But. Um, but anyway, that's the again point one, maybe even point one of of uh, or point oh one of one percent. I mean, that's a pretty rare thing. Any time that you can create that sentiment and share that sentiment, I think is a positive thing. He noticed that Mike went right into for about a minute and a half how this is going to benefit the company. Now, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with spending some time right at the front, but I'm also okay with it because it wasn't over the top and it was not the bulk of the meeting. The bulk of the meeting was on the employees and what this is going to do for them. Um, and that's good. I, I think that that breakdown was perfect. But he started there and then he ended there as well. He came back to, and he, he sprinkled it throughout 
as well. But he started there for about a minute and a half talking about how this is going to help increase focus, reduce absenteeism. Uh, uh, it's going to give employees peace of mind. I think that's good. Um, I, th I think you, in my opinion, I could go either way on this, but in my opinion, you want to be careful with the word presenteeism. What you said there is presenteeism, and then you said, I'm sure you know what that is. Um, the reality is a business owner is probably not going to know what that word refers to. Um, and and uh, you just, I don't, I could go either way on that. Sometimes you want to assume that they do, and if they don't, then they'll catch on. Sometimes that can have the opposite effect, though, where if you assume that they should know something and they don't, then they try to cover it up, but but all of a sudden they they lose confidence in what you're talking about. So I would just be careful. I'm and again, this is Mike. I'm I'm get into pretty minor stuff, but that's what we do in thin thin slicing. So right. yeah. So, the, so again, yeah, I could go either way on that. But yeah, the other thing is is that uh, in a meeting, I would generally pause at that point and kind of look at them and, and right. try to yeah. get a reaction. No, no question about it, right? But, and, but and again, you're right. You're, you know, it, the other risk that you run if they don't know what something is, is that they miss the next few things that you say because in their mind they're trying to figure out what the heck it is that you were just right. talking. Right. Right. Exactly. And presenteeism is like that. Absenteeism is a word that most people are familiar with. Presenteeism. There are a lot of HR people that are not familiar with presenteeism. I mean, they're familiar with the concept, but the word is is foreign to them. Then, then um, I'm going to change that around to talk about what that situation is. You know, being being at work, but but uh, being absent and doing what you need to do. Right. Yeah. Being there in body only. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a good way yep. to say that. But yep. okay. that, it's a good one to explain. And um, and and even if and and to your point, even if you were to make the comment. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with presenteeism. That's just when you know an employee is here, but it's body only. So mm -hmm. even if you say that, but then you go ahead and define it, good point. Then that's when they're nodding their head like they knew it. But again, to your point, they're not thinking about it for the next three or four things that you say, right? right. So they're right on on track there. Um, I, I, and you mentioned here when employees deal with legal situations. I made a note. I would give a few examples there. That would be a really good place to insert, uh, you know, like a, like a divorce, for example, which is a common thing. We heard you know, Mike and Mary talk about that this morning. Fifty percent of marriages end in divorce, so so that's something that their employees will have dealt with. Um, you could add in there a contractor dispute, maybe dealing with a cell phone bill or dealing, uh, you know, you got to be a little bit careful depending on what kind of company company it is. But uh, but give give three or four examples there of some legal situations that an employee could deal with. Even taking time off work to go fight a speeding ticket would be a good one there to help illustrate that point. And the point that you were making is a good is a great point. When your employees deal with legal stuff, it it affects them on their job. But that that would just be a really good point to give some real life examples. I like that. And yep. not and this is the one that we have to be careful on, folks. That's not. That's where we want to give examples that their that their employees have gone through. That's why divorce is is a good example there, because it is so common. Fighting a speeding ticket is a good example because it is so common. And 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 as a business owner, I would be sitting there saying, yes, my people do deal with that. Um, and save something like the houseboat boat story for when you shared it. You shared it at exactly the right time. But that would not be a good story to insert there, because there the business owner would be saying, "I don't think my people would ever deal with that." Right. So anyway, real life common examples would be would be what I'd I'd say to to uh, to to put in there. Mike kept checking in, and I wrote that down here throughout his presentation. He kept checking in with me. Again, so much of that would be visual as well, which is hard to replicate over the phone. But even uh, he, you know, even over the phone, he kept asking, you know, does that, are you, you know, he didn't say, are you with me? But he said, you know, I'm sure you would agree. And, and he, he used language that kept me involved. And I know that because it kept distracting me from taking notes, but, but it kept me involved, which is a very good thing. Because I didn't the, distract you, Mike. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but to your point, you did, right? Because that's the point. 
when you've got a decision maker or in front of a, a group of employees to enroll, you do need to distract them. They're going to be distracted by other stuff. Your job is to distract them to get them their attention back on you, to distract the distractions, in other words. So, so you did a very good job. Again, even over the phone, visual would have even been would have even been better on that. But um, so let's talk about your houseboat story, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, I, I would definitely add a name there if you've got the name. If you don't, then you don't you don't have to. But if you know the person's name, anytime you share a story, if you can share the first name of the person that is dealing with the story, uh, I think that that would be that that's always recommended not necessary but but recommended um i i love that story i thought it was great i thought that um for a decision maker it would be good if you're in front of that those warehouse employees no, it's not that may one. not be the best story right because they might be sitting there saying well i am never going to go on a houseboat <laughs> you know or or you know that that doesn't really apply to me but to the owner of the company, I think it's a great story. And to office workers, I would probably share something like that. I thought it was a great story. Um, the only the only thing that I picked out that I would be careful on in the story is you mentioned that they called the emergency line, and that's probably not what happened because because that would not qualify as an emergency. Actually, um, they did call the emergency line, which is and they the just transferred them to the law firm. Yep. Okay. Well. Um, I would just be careful with that because yeah, you don't want to. It's stop not that. a huge deal, but it's not an emer That's not a covered emergency. Mm -hmm. And so, evidently, what happened there is it was during normal business hours, so they just transferred them to the law firm and they just opened up a regular intake. Mm -hmm. And they can open up an urgent intake, but if that had been after hours, I don't know that they would have. Or, or I should say this: maybe it was after hours, and they did, but they don't have to. And so, I'd be careful. You know that that if they did, then it's a going above and beyond. But I mean, listen, that's a very very minor thing. Um, and I mean, truthfully, in a DM meeting, I don't know that it's that big of a deal because it's not like the decision maker is going to remember that. In an enrollment, I'd be careful with okay. with that particular line. Um, I love the. I mean, really, I love the entire story. I thought the entire story was great. The length of it was perfect. The details mattered. When you first started getting into houseboat in Florida. My my initial reaction was, does it matter that it's in Florida? Does it matter that they flew down there? But obviously, with that story, it did. Those are important details because that's all cost on them, and they're stranded in Florida, you know, several states away without uh, w without what they're looking for. And so, uh, you know, I thought that was great. I I love the line. Would she have been able to find an attorney? Probably, but. How much would that have cost? I, I thought that was a fantastic line. I thought that was really, really good. Um, I'm trying to read my writing here. I was writing so fast. But, I, yeah, I thought that was good. I thought the outcome was good. I thought uh, you closed it well. Um, yeah, I, I just I thought that that story, that is a great story that I can tell that you've worked really hard to refine. And I, I, so I commend you for that. I think that's great. Um, again, how how are you switching to the identity theft? If we're in person, if we're looking at each other eyeball to eyeball, Mike, you'd probably point to a brochure or something. How how would you typically do that in a in a live meeting? Yeah, how would you physically you know, transition. Yeah, as as far as uh, if you're sitting across from me, um, you know, I might even say something along the line. Now let's let's talk about identity theft. Um, you know, I could go that way, or I could say, you know, in in the packet um, is information about identity theft that that you can look at. But but here's you know here's what I found kind of thing, and, and then go back into the presentation. So my recommendation on that would be, and 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 this is something that is that is applicable in a decision maker meeting, maybe even more so in an enrollment, but. But any time that you can switch topics or that you're switching topics, if we can do something physically in addition to what you say, Taking then a break it just or... helps that person make that mental transition, right? Sure. So either a different brochure or turn a page in the proposal, 
but something physical that helps them make that mental transition would would be good. And again, you know, we're not going to have that over the phone, but uh, but but in person, that's typically a good thing. That's the reason why in an enrollment, I like to use the trifold brochures because there are two different brochures. Now, this is again one of those one percenter type of things, right? So you could you could do a, an enrollment presentation without that and still sign up a lot of people. But I have found that the two different brochures is actually a good thing. It helps people make that mental transition. Just the act of taking out a new brochure can help them do that. I thought that was good. Um, I, you, you had said, uh, I don't remember exactly how you said it, about um, a credit card being uh, compromised. Mm -hmm. I, it was, you were assuming that that had happened to me, which in 2019 is probably a pretty safe assumption. Yep. You, you might consider changing that to, you know, I'm sure you've known known people who have had their credit card compromised. Okay. Would Would you agree with that? Yeah, it makes it, sense. it's yeah. safer. It's safer to. Do you have you ever known people who have had their credit card compromised? And they're probably going to come back and say, Yeah, I have. Right. But what we're what we're looking for there is to avoid. Have you ever had your comp card compromised? Nope, I haven't. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Avoid where it kind of backfires and it's like. You know, no, none of my people have ever dealt with that or, or something like that, right? So uh, have you known someone is, is sometimes a safer way to ask a question or make an assumption uh, than, than you directly yourself? I thought that that was a really good build from a credit card being compromised to now imagine if it's not just a credit card. Imagine if someone was using your social security number. Now, you 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 got to some things that they could use that social for, but I would recommend as soon as you say, imagine if someone was using your social security number, give them an example of how that could be used without affecting their credit, you know, non-credit related example. Makes sense. You did come back to that, but, but sometimes we'll want to connect that dot a little bit quicker for them. Um, but I love that build. I thought that was really good. And then again, you came back to X percentage of identity theft does not deal with credit. I thought all of that was was really, really good. Um, and then that was another time where you went back to helping productivity. Um, and, and you might even make that case, uh, make that point a little bit stronger. You know, can you imagine if one of your people, if one of your employees is going through that, can you imagine how that would affect them at work? I mean, they're going to be—they're going to be totally distracted, totally defocused. Maybe, maybe even build that a little bit more than you did. Although it was—it was good. Um, I love the Mike. You used really good emotional language throughout. I thought that there was a lot of intentional emotional language, which I thought was good. One of my I've favorite been, I've words. Been taught well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you'd been to a training before. Were they talking about that? <laughs> um, one of my favorite words that you used was paralyzed. I mean, this just leaves an employee almost paralyzed. What a powerful word. What a powerful phrase to say. You mentioned, you know, now you're having to pay overtime for that as well. That was all going back and kind of sprinkling in how this is going to benefit the company while he's talking about how this is going to benefit the employees. And again, keeping that the, the main focus. Um, I like the phrase that you used. This is going to give your employees security. I thought that was great. Um, one one thing I'm, I'm trying to read my writing here I was writing so fast okay now I remember this point that I, I was going to share with you one thing that we uh, this is this is uh, something that Brian Fahili often says and it's a it's a great point you know sometimes when we're sitting here talking about 16 million victims of identity theft last year and billions that are you know, compromise, have their information compromised. When you're meeting with a decision maker, one thing that might be going through their mind at that point is, if this is such a problem, why haven't more of my employees dealt with this? Because mm -hmm. they might be thinking about one of their employees who have dealt with, it, who, who has dealt with it, but they might not be aware of any of their employees who have dealt with this. Um, or if 
even if they are aware of one or two, if the numbers are as big as he's saying, why isn't it more of my people who have dealt with this? And we can use that as a positive. Number one, we can resolve the concern, but number two, we can use that as a positive too. What Brian Fahili says, and I really like this, he says, now it's not something that a lot of people will talk to you about, honestly. And Brian can get away with that because that's kind of a pointed comment that Brian's such a lovable person that he can get away with it. But he says it's not something that they're going to necessarily bring up to their superiors because it, it, it's kind of embarrassing, kind of like going through a bad divorce. And, and it's something that, that they're not always willing to talk about openly, especially with their superiors, but it absolutely does uh, can impact their performance at work. That helps resolve that thought of, well, why am I not hearing about this from my employees more? And then we can turn that into uh, you know, a positive as well with all of these data breaches that are going on. However many of your employees have dealt with this in the past, I guarantee it's, gonna, it's, it's about ready to be a lot more. So yeah, you are going to hear about it. <laughs> it would be another way to kind of to say that. But anyway, that's something that you could add there. Um, I like it. Okay, I'm I'm looking here. Oh, great job on uh, coming back to the legal plan, talking about the amendment. They're never going to be able to use it. You really made that point clear. That was a great way to overcome that potential objection before it came up. Um, you know, and obviously you you're going to get into pricing. Now I kind of asked you about that. Um, I think that if you were sitting down at a table with me, you would kind of naturally get into pricing. Hopefully, uh, that would be a page in your proposal or something that you're turning to, talking about pricing. Yeah. As yeah. you as you got into it, though, I think you covered it perfectly. You broke it down in a way that was that was bite sized, easy to digest, and where excuse me, frankly, where I can easily see the value in it. And I thought that that was, that was perfect. That bringing in pricing, and I'm trying to remember exactly what you said, because I didn't write it down, but I think you said, you know, this is going to be $18.95 a month, for example, or $33.90, which if you're talking about a new group, that would typically be $38.90 unless you're talking about the large group rate. But I think you, you said at that point, you know, so we're talking about less than a dollar a day or about a dollar a day. If if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what you had said. Mm -hmm. That might be a really good point, though, to bring in payroll deduction. Very nonchalantly. I don't want to say discreetly because, you know, you're not trying to hide it. But without making it into a big deal, that might be a good point. When you say 3390 the weekly on that is 782 and that might be a good point to say, which is only $7.82 a week out of their check. So no wonder so many people are signing up for this. Good point. Good. And that way you're assuming a payroll deduction. Now, you, know, you don't have to assume a payroll deduction either. Uh, and I think you handled payroll well when I asked about it. But that might be a good time to kind of bring that in and um, and introduce that topic. It is a topic that needs to be covered Somehow, so either a question or or an assumption, but somehow we need to know whether this is going to be self-pay or payroll deduction, um, and that can be a good time to bring it in. Now it did come up, and 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 you handled it well uh, when I asked the question about that. But that might be a good time to bring it in. Just a thought. Uh, none of that is is uh, is is going to. None of these suggestions that I have are suggestions that you absolutely have to do or else it's not going to go well. So that's the good news, which is evidenced by the fact that you've already opened up several groups. So, But these are those little kind of one percenters uh, type of thing. Great. I appreciate that. Um, you know, Mike, uh, something that I think would be helpful, um, and I, I don't know if you can incorporate it in this series of trainings or not, but uh, getting over objections. So you you were you you pretty much softballed me and I and I appreciate that. Um, I have to tell you that I had somewhat of a sleepless night last night, which I normally wouldn't for a decision making, <laughs> but I knew I was doing it in front of a whole bunch of other professional folks. Sure. <laughs> and so sure. you kind of 
But yeah, um, but you you really softballed it with me, and I mean, you you bought the product pretty much right away, which is is an ideal situation, but isn't real life. Um, you know, it might help if if um, if we all put together objections that we've come across, and if you could get some time to to sit down and and talk about um, how you overcome those. What's the best practice to overcome different objections? Absolutely. Yeah, no, we can we can definitely do that. That again, whether we do that in in this particular series or not, but we'll have another uh webinar mm-hmm. coming up soon on doing the perfect decision maker meeting. Okay. And and that's something that we can absolutely cover on that for sure, yeah. 110%. The the reality is though, and I mean this in all sincerity, you really did overcome a lot of the potential objections that that would come up. Excuse me, and you overcame them before they they came up, and and a big part of that, Mike, is you were passionate about the plan. You got me excited about the plan. Um, you know, the 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 story helped to do that. Your emotional language helped to do that. Your confidence helped me to be excited about the plan. And I've always maintained that's the number one way to overcome objections with a decision maker is just get them wanting the plan. And, and I think you did a really good job of doing that. But to your point, sure, there are some other things that can come up and will come up. And uh, and as much as we can talk those through and be be familiar and comfortable with overcoming them, you know, I, I think is good. I think it's really good. I, I like your phrase. This is so timely. That was when you were actually kind of getting into an enrollment. Um, you said this is so timely. I thought that that was really good. Um, I liked how. You know, and this is the part that's got to be fluid. This is the part that, although we offer some scripting, some scripted language for closing, every close is going to be a little bit different. You know, here's a case where we've got a mandatory meeting for some of the employees. Uh, it's going to be a voluntary meeting for others, for the office staff, and that's not an uncommon thing in any way. So, so that's going to be fluid, and 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 Mike, you handled that perfectly. And you could have gone either way. You could have gone for, you know, when is your next uh, when is your next safety meeting with your with your warehouse, uh, or you could go the direction that you did go, which is let's start with your office employees. And I liked your point there. I thought it was a great point. Uh, let's start with them because you know that way they're they're on board with this and they're familiar with it. If a question comes up, um, so so I'm you can go either way, and that's where you you're going to have to be. And I'm, I'm saying you now, as in all of us, have to be uh, have to be fluid, and we have to be flexible, um, and know what what the different options are. But whatever you decide to do, you go for it, and you go for the close. There was nothing, there was zero indication throughout that entire meeting that I might not be the decision maker, or that I would need to talk to somebody else. And I did that intentionally. Now, even if there had been. Mike still could have gone for the close, but I wanted to, and, and, and you call it softballing, and that's fine, but the reality is I wanted you to be clear that you could go ahead and close me, that, that this was not something that you were going to need to follow up. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times it is, but remember, my closing percentage is about 25%, 25% of the time, I'm one out of four, I'm looking to close, and that's what I wanted folks to be able to see is when that does present itself, when those cases are are there, where you can close them, how do you do that? And Mike did a great job of, of going for it. He just went for it and and uh, said, let's set up a lunch and learn and let's talk dates. Do you mind if I look at my calendar? And let's get let's get some dates going on this. So again, I applaud you. I commend you. I think it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know that we took a lot of time here. I mean, I took I just took 30 minutes. Uh, no, almost 40 minutes. Just thin slot just thin slicing, just critiquing. Um, but that's part of this is I want I want folks to see what what kind of an involved process that really is. When you record yourself doing a presentation and then you come back and listen to that, what should that look like? I mean what I mean, you know, really what what should uh, what should that critique process look like? And it should not be, that sounded great, or that sounded good, here's a suggestion. 
If it sounded great, why did it sound great? What specific elements made it sound great? And, and, and that's, that's me just jotting down as fast as I could coming up with two, two entire pages. And I'm like squeezing stuff in at the bottom of the second page here of, of critique for Mike. Now, not, you know, most of it's positive. I mean, really. There, th I had three or four suggestions, things that, that he might want to change up. But most of it's positive. But that's part of critiquing is if it's good, why is it good? And if it needs to change, why does that need to change? And, and what specifically could be added or could be updated or could be changed to make it that much better? But again, Mike, I, I, I want to thank you. It takes a, an incredible amount of courage to, for anyone to stand in front of their peers, to, to be vulnerable, and to say, I'm going to do I'm going to do something, and I'm going to let you pick it apart. That, that takes an, a, an incredible amount of courage. Just so you know, I'm getting uh, quite a few comments here on the questions panel of you know, how, how great this is and, and how great of a job you did. And so, again, on behalf of all of us here listening in, thank you very much, Mike, for sharing that. Well, thanks for the opportunity, Mike. I really appreciate it. So let's, let's go now to Tracy Wright-Owen. And uh, Tracy, let me see if I can get you unmuted. And Mike, I'm actually going to go mute your line. That way we can keep background noise down. And Tracy Wright-Owen, I'm going to try to unmute you. Maybe. <laughs> I see your name here. Uh, it's not letting me unmute you. Or maybe, Tracy, maybe you can unmute yourself. I don't know if you can click on the little red mi microphone and try to unmute yourself. Tracy, when I when I try to do it, it it says, uh, okay. Well, actually, hold on. Okay, now do we have you, Tracy? I I think so. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. Absolutely. Very um, loudly. <laughs> okay, good. Um, hey, wasn't that great to hear from Mike and and hear his decision maker meeting? I thought that was fantastic. Um, you feel you feel up to doing a, uh, a, a an employee enrollment presentation? I want to go back and listen to Mike's. I didn't get to listen to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It, it, he did a great job, and and um, so, but yeah, if you're if you're open, Tracy, if you're if you're uh, ready to rock and roll, then then we'll go ahead and dive in. Okay, that would be great. Um, but let me just ask a question: Are you going to yeah. send out Mike's a recording of what Mike just did? Yes. Yeah. This is all being recorded. Yep. So the whole critique process and everything is, and and that's why. I said at the beginning here, today's training is different than every other week because it's not something that we go through an agenda and, and we have an outline for. This is kind of more of an unplugged version where it's all, uh, you know, it's all um, based on these presentations, and 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 that's good. That's that's. Uh, I think it's I think it's healthy to to, to spend time doing this. So. so so our scenario here, Tracy, is you're at a company, you're presenting this. The, the legal plan and the identity theft plan. And you can do just one or the other, too. If you want to just make it one, that's fine, too. But, uh, but you're presenting the product to a group of employees and then, uh, and then enrolling them. Does that sound okay? Oops. I think we might have lost her one more time. Let's see. Tracy, can you still hear me? Oh no, we we may have lost Tracy. Well, it, uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll go up to Doris then. Tracy, let me know if we if we get you back. Let me let me do this. Let me go to Doris then, and and uh, and that way we'll we'll work on getting Tracy back on after Doris. But uh, but Doris Frencha, let me find your name. There we go. <laughs> Doris Frencha, do we have you on? <coughs> Hello, Mike. Yes, Good morning. Yeah, we got you <laughs> loud and clear. How'd you like my, Mr. Uh, Mike Scott's uh, decision oh, maker meeting? Mike Scott, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you for the time and preparation you put into that. And I cannot tell that he's a product of your training, Mr. Richard, which is all, which is an all in good compliment. That was excellent. That was yeah. excellent. 
I, I, I totally agree. I, I thought he did a fantastic job. I thought it was a great learning experience for uh, for everyone. So yes. if you're um, uh, if if you're up to it, and I know I'm I'm kind of putting you on the spot here to do <laughs> a short presentation. That's not something that's easy to do. I mean, it's yeah. frankly it's easier to do a 15 minute presentation than it is to do a five minute presentation. Exactly, and I didn't even have the preparation time that Mike Scott had. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> that's true. I asked her this morning if she'd be willing to change it up a little bit and and uh, and and do that. So so I want you to know we appreciate your willingness to to be a good sport about this and and uh, and to do it and and I'd love to uh, I'd love to listen in and and again spend some time thin slicing it a little bit. Okay, hold on. Let me get my uh, one second. I want to get my timer going here yeah that's okay. okay and 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 give me an idea if, if you because i i think that setting up the role play is is an important thing um you want to role play as if this was a you know a staff meeting at a school you want to role play a tabletop presentation what, what are your thoughts i would love to role play at a school or at a normal open enrollment where they are benefit rich yeah. And Legal Shield gets its whole entire five minutes <laughs> after so, medical, so is, after dental, after 401k, after the life guy. Yep. Then absolutely, and I, that, that is something that is extraordinarily common, especially coming up in the fourth quarter. Absolutely, where you're going to have these companies that say, "Come on in for open enrollment," and you know we click our heels and and uh, you know shout for joy, and we're all excited about that. And then the company says, "Now we've got you on the schedule." Uh -huh. so we've got a real full schedule, <laughs> and that's what that's what Doris means by being benefits rich. You know, we've got the Lincoln Financial guy and the Aflac lady, and we've got our broker that's going to handle health. And I mean, you know, just at one after another after another. Um, now, I, I, let me again just maybe put you on the spot a little bit. Is it your mm -hmm. preference then, Doris, in those types of situations to go last? Yes, that's my preference. Yes, and, and different people do feel differently about that. I've heard some people say, "I want to go as early as possible." But you no. like to go, kind of go towards the end? I love to go towards the end because I don't know if you agree with this or, or where I got this from in my sales training. People tend to, to listen and remember the last thing that they heard. So yeah. I want to be <laughs> the last thing that they heard and really, you know, get to digest it. I like that. No, I like that a lot. And, and, and I agree with that. I, I will say, um, and this is not meant to be a pat on the on, on the back for us, but but one thing that Doris and I have in common is when we stand up, we're pretty good at getting the attention of the people in the room. And yeah. that is not a strength that everyone has. And so if that's not one of your strengths, and, and you know, good, bad, or indifferent doesn't really matter, you need to know your strengths. And if your strength is not being able to get in front of a room and command attention, and maybe you're a little bit more soft-spoken, maybe you're, you know, you're someone that is not as... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word to describe that, but I mean that's what it is. Is charismatic. Yeah, the, you know, um, but, but Therese is somebody that's going to stand up and you're going to listen to her, even if she's the fifteenth person that you're hearing. But mm -hmm. if that's not your strength, you might want to go earlier, and, yeah. and 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 keep that in mind as well. But having said that, I'm with you because actually I like going after the Lincoln Financial guy that's just put him to sleep because mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to wake him up. And I'm 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 gonna oh this guy's actually gonna 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 talk to us and we're gonna pay attention. So Absolutely. I'm with you. I like to go at the end and I like the theory. I like the thought of you know they're gonna remember the last thing that they heard. So we're in an open enrollment meeting. Correct. Um, Lincoln's gone. You know I, I keep saying Lincoln, but that's just one of them. But Aflac, <laughs> you know Colonial, whoever has gone, they've heard from you know maybe four or five other people. The the uh, decision maker is a little bit nervous. Because mm -hmm. they scheduled an hour for the meeting, and they're already in an hour and ten minutes. And oh, so, all of a sudden, you know, they come to to Doris. She's with Legal Shield. She's the last presenter, and um, and that's probably your introduction, unless you've given them something else. Is the HR is going to get up and say, "Good news, folks! This is our last presenter," and uh, <laughs> that might not be the nicest thing to say, but that's how they are going to say it. And now, Doris has four to five minutes that she's going to now try to do a presentation that's going to get your attention mm -hmm. and make you either want to sign up or at least come see her to, to get some more information. Are, are we okay on all that? Correct. Correct. Now, okay. I am trying to ask for the enrollment forms because it's still, it's still a 40, 50 man group and they're still on paper enrollment. 
So we're doing, okay. uh, we're still doing our paper, paper enrollment. So, so you've handed that out previous to you speaking. That's Correct. Their packet or something like that. Okay, so they've Correct. got an enrollment form. And then uh, materials wise, do they have, are, are you using a trifold brochure on this? Are you using a, a placemat or? I like to have you ever with okay. the legal and the identity theft, you know, side by side. All on one page. Yeah, perfect. All on okay. one page. Correct. Sounds good. I'm going to mute my phone out now and let you let you do your thing. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I've gotten my introduction and I am coming to the front of the room. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Doris Frencher, your Legal Shield rep, and I'm so excited that Jane and Sally have approved the new benefits, new voluntary benefits of legal protection and identity theft protection. And you know what, guys? What I want to do is go over the rates right up front, and then we'll jump into how these new benefits work. Our Legal Shield is $9.48 per person, as you can see at the bottom of your sheet, of your rate sheet. And that covers an entire family. That's two adults and up to 10 children up to the age of 26. And then our ID shield is only $13.98 per pay period, again, covering the entire family, two adults and up to 10 children. Wait a minute, does anybody have more than 10 children? Okay, okay, great, so we're good today. And if you are an individual, you have individual ID shield rates at 698, guys. So let's take a listen to what's important to you, what fits your value system and your budget. And what I like to do is start with the Legal Shield plan first, guys, because I'll be honest, when I first started with this company, my immediate thoughts was, hey, I'm not a bad person. Why do I need a legal protection benefit? And what is legal protection? I had never used an attorney before. I wasn't bad and I wasn't litigious. I'm being honest with you guys. That's what I was thinking. However, I have had this plan for almost about eight years myself personally, and I've used it almost 30 times. And again, not for bad stuff. I don't go gangster at the five o'clock, you guys. <laughs> what I think you all will agree is that bad things happen to good people. Yes or yes. And if you could pick up the phone and navigate that legal issue with the advice of an attorney and not have to worry about costs, you would. But unfortunately, a lot of times things don't justify the cost of an attorney, so we use Google to make life-altering events, right? Google is America's wise counsel. But what Legal Shield does is it gives you the um, unlimited access for personal matters where you get access to an entire firm of over 100 attorneys in the state of Texas. They will give you unlimited advice on all kinds of things, guys, like divorce, uh, bankruptcy, a landlord not returning a deposit, a car insurance company making you jump through hoops to get your car fixed, and good stuff too, buying a home, adoption. All of those things are legal in nature, guys, but we don't really get to use the advice of an attorney. So more than just advice, there's document review, there's will preparation, estate planning, and even traffic ticket representation. So guys, look at this tool as an, a, a resource because bad things happen to good people, but also a resource to be proactive in knowing that every decision you make for your family is the best decision to protect your family and your legacy. That's the overall gist of Legal Shield. Okay, makes sense? Got it. Now I'm gonna shift into ID Shield, and that's on the other side of the sheet. And identity theft takes a little bit less to explain. Unfortunately, because most of us have been a victim of identity theft or we know someone. Can I, that's been a victim. Can I see by a round of uh, show of hands, who's that person? Maybe been a victim or know someone? Yes, guys, this, is, uh, this is, happens a lot. More than half the rooms uh, raise their hand. So quantitatively, comprehensively, ID Shield is the best product. That's why Emily chose us for three reasons. We monitor more of what matters. We're not only doing credit monitoring, and by the way, this is three bureau, all three bureaus of credit monitoring, but we're monitoring courthouses because guys, there's a thing that's called criminal identity theft, driver's license fraud. There is, um, and obviously we're mon uh, monitoring the uh, dark web as well because all of our data, unfortunately, is being can be bought and sold on the dark web. So we're doing comprehensive monitoring, but the second reason is we are 
the only company that will assign you a dedicated licensed private investigator to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, no cap on time or money to prove your innocence. And thirdly, we cover pre-existing situations, guys. This is more than monitoring. This is comprehensive identity theft restoration. Now, how do you get enrolled? If you take your enrollment sheet, put the date. I want you to put 10-1 because these benefits won't be effective until 10-1. Look at what's highlighted in yellow, name, address, only last four of your social, and down at the bottom, circle what's important to you. You can get both or you can get whichever one you want, guys. Um, and yes, I, I, I already know you're going to ask, does the form have to be completed today? Yes, it does. If you're not enrolling, put opt out. If you are enrolling, come and get an enrollment kit. And if you have to think about it or talk about it with your spouse, still complete the form. You have three days to opt out. I'm so excited to be your new Legal Shield rep. I'll be in the back if you have any more questions. Woo! Wow. Okay. <laughs> 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 and that is the point where Doris gets to breathe a little, a little bit. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. So let's break that down. Now, the fact that it was a shorter presentation, I only got one page of notes, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of two, but uh, but hey, fantastic job! Thank you so much for sharing that. I, uh, first and foremost, I want our folks to to notice a couple of things before I actually get into any detail here. Number one, Doris has to be comfortable with the pre with the information. She has to know her product in order to 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 be able to do a presentation in general, but for sure to be able to do a presentation in that short amount of time, right? If she's sitting there wondering what she going to say next, she, she, there's no way that she could have done what she just did. So, I mean, you know, now we're fortunate. We've got a $100,000 ring earner doing this who's been around for eight plus years that can uh, that, that, that is comfortable with that. But that's, first and foremost, we've got to get to the point where we're comfortable enough with what to say that we can start to uh, pick and choose what, you know, what are we going to include? What are we not going to include? Uh, what are we going to emphasize in this particular group? How are we going to say what we're going to say? And Doris is certainly, you know, a perfect example of that, no, no question. Um, okay. Another thing that, that I'll just point out is that she, she was, um, in presenting that, most of what she talked about was conceptual at least on the legal plan. Now, she, I, I did jot down, she kind of made the identity theft plan a two-feature plan, which I actually really like a lot. And, and I actually don't mind doing that in a regular presentation. <laughs> but, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, the, but especially when she was spending a couple minutes talking about the legal plan, look, in two minutes, you're not going to be able to get into unlimited advice and consultation, letters on your behalf, um, you're not going to be able to get into the will. and th Now, you might be able to mention something like that, but it's not going to be a feature-rich presentation at, like a 10 or 15-minute presentation could be. It's going to be a concept sale. It's going to be something where she talked about at length you know, the, the idea of being proactive and, and having an attorney and making good decisions. And yes, bad things happen to good people, but, but the concept here is everyone's going to be able to use this because if you have an attorney, you're going to be better off. And that's what she's selling is that idea, is that philosophy, it's that concept. And so before I get into much detail, I, I want to point out those two things as well. Uh, your time was 110% was on track. You started at 11.59. Again, these are all central time. 11.59 you started at 12.01, two minutes in. Now, I didn't have a stopwatch going on you, but I was just looking at the time on the clock. 12.01, so two minutes in, you transition from legal to IDT. And at 12.03, four minutes in, it might have been four and a half, but four, four, between four and five mm -hmm. minutes in is when you went into the close. So you were, you, your HR person would have been very pleased with <laughs> your, your five minute it's time. Uh, me back the next year, huh? <laughs> exactly, yes, exactly, which is a big thing. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you could have done a 10 minute presentation and she, you know, the HR person would have been pacing back and forth and you mm -hmm. might have written a few sales, but yeah, would you be invited back next year? No, and that's sir. 
always what you got to be thinking of. Uh, I like how you went over the rates right up front. I liked especially in a short presentation like this, talking about the per pay period rate. Um, I always would talk about the per pay, pay period rate before I would say the monthly rate, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the idea there is you want to go as small as you can, right? right? right. So you want to go as small as you can. Those rates on the sheet that Doris has that she's using, they're on that sheet as well. Mm -hmm. So that was that was good. She could reference the sheet that she's that she's using, so that folks could go back and get those rates. I like how you said, uh, uh, you know, do any of you have more than ten kids? Okay, then we're all good in this room. Obviously, a little bit of humor there. Um, you know, if somebody does raise their hand and they have twelve kids, she could follow that up with, "Well, sir, you're just going to have to pick your ten favorite kids." In the right. Plan. And that's always her her you know go to if if that happens but again it's just like a good attorney a good attorney never asks a question that he or she does not know the answer to same thing with a great presenter and and that's you you saw that with Doris. you saw that with mike this morning as well the questions are intentional they're structured and no matter what they say they know the how how they're going to respond mm -hmm. and so and and we see that here with Doris as well. Um, the same thing, and I'll just get forward here, same thing when she got into the identity theft. How many of you are that person? You've been a victim or you know somebody who's been a victim. She knows where it's going to go. And by the way, when she said that, she wasn't necessarily waiting for response. That's called kind of an assumptive uh, participation question. It's where you're not necessarily expecting a lot of people to raise their hand, but you're going to get the head nods, and you're just kind of assuming that uh, that 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 that's how that that people are in that situation. Correct. And and for example, let me break that down. Another question that I sometimes use in a, in a presentation, in an enrollment presentation: um, How many of you know that identity theft is a serious problem? Well, mm -hmm. you can ask that as a true participation question. How many of you, by a show of hands? know that identity theft is a serious problem. And then you raise your hand, you kind of pause and let them raise their hand. Or you can ask it as kind of that assumptive participation and, and you could rephrase that to say, and guys, I mean, look, how many of us know, we know identity theft is, is a serious problem. I mean, you guys agree with me on that. We all know that it's an issue. Now that you're not necessarily gonna have people raise their hand, but you're asking the question, you're getting the interaction, and there are two different ways to do that, especially with something like identity theft, where it is such a common thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I liked that. I liked her. Um, I liked her. Uh, how would you call that? Your her, her, not just her phraseology, but I liked her posture in asking that and assuming that this was something that everyone was was uh, was dealing with or knew somebody who who was. Um, I liked how she said, you know, I, I, when I first signed up, I thought about an attorney being something that you got when you were in trouble. I wasn't a bad person. I was not litigious. But yet I've had this for eight years and I've used it over 30 times. That's, that's incredible. That's great. That's a great testimonial. Now, she'll get some raised eyebrows on that. But <laughs> notice she went right back to a clarification of, again, not 30 times that I've gotten in trouble, 30 times that I wanted to make a good decision. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't write down exactly how you said it, but that was the point that you made. And you, and you went right back to that. Otherwise, you'll have people sitting there saying, why is, why is this girl using it 30 times? I loved her line. Oh, that's how you said it. I wrote it out. I don't go gangster after five. You know, <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was a great line. That was perfect. Um, a phrase that she used that I thought was great, she said, yes or yes. That's, again, another assumptive you're following along. We agree on this. I'm not asking you if you agree. I'm telling you we agree on this right. uh, kind of approach, and and that's good. I mean, I think that that's a that, that's a positive thing. Again, so much of what Mike shared works because of Mike's personality. So much of what I'm talking about with Doris works because it's Doris's personality. If you're someone that's soft spoken, and and maybe a little bit more timid. That yes or yes approach is probably not going to work for you. So that's part of this business. Is part of life is just finding your own voice, finding the things that tend to work well for you. 
the yes or yes does not work as well for me. And 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 I've tried it. Reese pulls it off very very well. She pulls that acceptative. It, it didn't work as well for me, and so I didn't use it. And that's okay. That's part of what we're. That's why we get on here and we talk 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 for two hours. Is I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get enough out there that something sticks for someone and they say, yeah, that's going to work for me. And sometimes you just have to try it out. So, no, I love that, though. I thought it was great the way that you used it. I like how she used the word resource. And you have to understand, Reese, I'm writing as fast as I can. Now. Like, I'm <laughs> seriously writing. But I love how she used the word re This is going to be a resource for you. We want this to be a resource for you. I thought that was really good. Um, I like how she said, again, and, and this kind of summed up, again, that concept sale. That's the overall gist of the legal plan. I thought that was fantastic as well. On the identity theft, uh, quantitatively and comprehensively, two, two big words. If you go over three syllables, the riches have a hard time maybe catching up with that. <laughs> but, uh, but two good words there. The best coverage available in the market today, quantitatively and comprehensively, this is the best identity theft coverage that you can put in place for your family. And uh, I, I like the way that she, that she, again, her confidence said that more than her language. Her language was great. Now, that's what I want to point out. But her confidence is what made the language. If she was, if she was ho-hum about it and shifty about it, she gets up there, uh, well, you know, I mean, identity, she could use all the five-syllable words she wanted, and it would not convey that. <laughs> so, so the words, the word choice is great, but the confidence is what makes it great. Um, and, I, and again, I jotted down there, she really took the identity theft product, ID Shield, which has, I don't even know anymore, I mean, what, 30, 35 <laughs> features, actual features to it? Yes. And and she made it a two feature plan. Which I love. And the two features were monitoring and restoration. And she was able to do that because she simplified it. She was able to talk about even even getting in uh, that was not as much of a concept as it was actual feature cell. Uh but she was able to do that in two minutes because she simplified. Now we talk a lot about three and five and you know the three features of I, uh, three main features of ID Shield, the five most commonly used features of uh, Legal Shield. I, I think most of you have probably heard me train on those before. When you've got four or five minutes, uh, you don't need to do three and five. It's not enough time to do three and five. So that's where she turned the legal basically into a concept cell, and then she talked about the two big features of, of ID, and that and that was great. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. At 12.03, she got into the enrollment sheet. And something that's key there is no matter how fast you, we, we've, we've had to speak during the presentation, and Doris had to talk fast, when we get into enrollment, that's a part where we've got to intentionally slow down. So I don't know if you caught that, but, but, you've, but she slowed down on that enrollment, and you might pause there, might have to pause there, get them to look at that sheet, but that's such an important part of what we do that, we, that we've got to be able to slow that down. Uh, you know, we've got to be able to accentuate it. Our speech should be more staccato at that point. The difference is speech that kind of flows together and kind of runs together like I'm doing right now, and then staccato speech where there's almost a pause between each word. That's staccato speech, and, and, and when we're closing, it's got to be that way to get people to take it out, to look at their form, that we slow that down, and we have them, uh, you know, do whatever. Fill it out right at the top. This is the form that i got to get back. Now, you heard her kind of use that Bill Stovall uh, close that we, that we heard last week. You know, you go ahead and fill it. I need everyone to fill it out, and then you've got three days. That you could, that you could, uh, you know, if you call me, and decide not to do, or you, you, what? I, I forget how you said that, but, but it was similar to what what Bill said last week. Right. Uh, call me, you know, before this date, uh, and let me know. In an open enrollment environment, she could say everybody fills it out. If you don't want it, you just write decline at the top. But go ahead and fill out your form. 
that's fine. You know, totally, totally uh, acceptable. Um, or, you know, you, you could say at an open enrollment, uh, come see me. We're doing a drawing for people that turn it in today. Or you need to turn it in to Mary in HR, and it's got to be in by next Tuesday. Right. Any one of those is going to be good. I mean, open enrollment is tough because everyone else, especially if you do go last, like like you and I like to do, uh, everyone else has said, just turn your form into Mary by Tuesday. Turn your form into Mary by Tuesday. So it is a little bit harder to get up there and say, now you've got to do this today, right? It, yeah. it, it just the the um, environment is not the same as it would be if it was just if it was just us presenting. And so sometimes you might have to do that. But again, I always like to incentivize anyone that's going to do it, do it today. Dereese is doing that by saying everyone's got to fill it out. And then you can always decide within so many days not to do it, whatever that is. But you've got to have a strategy to go ahead and get people to take action while they're thinking about it. And, um, and so I think you, you know, obviously did a great job at that as well. But my friend, I, I cannot thank you enough for, again, especially on such short notice, <laughs> being willing to, uh, to, to, to share with our group here. I mean, it was just fantastic. And, Again, the feedback that people are sharing is is extremely positive, and we just want to thank you for taking some time to uh, yeah. to do that. I like. Uh, let me scroll down. Again, a lot of good feedback. Uh, Senora says, uh, "Wow, that was exciting." That was Valerie Lowe. Wow, that was exciting. Thank you, Dorit, for that <laughs> wonderful presentation. That's how I felt when you finished. I'm like, "Woo!" And that's how employees are gonna feel. They're like, "Dang, that was that was a lot better than that." Aflac or you know yeah. whatever I mean <laughs> I do I, like it when too much. I get people that walk up to me and say you have the best presentation during open enrollment we look forward to seeing you and then yeah. I have to change up my stories right so <laughs> but yeah I loved, it. I loved it now there's a lot of great uh, feedback that people are are uh, are giving on here so uh, I'm just kind of reading through these thank you these great oh. comments. fantastic uh, fantastic job uh, Marguerite, like like how you said, I don't turn gangsta after five. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Doris, thank you. very. Any other comments or thoughts that you have? Uh, on, thank on you. Um, I try to use the member. I, I don't think I articulated it as clearly because clearly, my time was running out, but I try to use the, well, I do use the folder with the will questionnaire in there as a close for those that are signed that know they're signing up today. I usually say, hey, you know, guys, if you don't do anything this upcoming year, but get your estate planning done and check that monitoring to make sure you're not currently a victim of identity theft, this benefit pays for itself for years. So come and get your temporary membership kit because you can start completing your will questionnaire and using this tonight. But I ran out of time. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, that's amazing. great. Um, well, thank you. Thank you again thank for you. sharing that. Thank you. Uh, Dave Fizito is asking about the standard group rate let's let's maybe break that down a little bit um that would be worth talking about let me i'm going to go ahead and right. stop my sh uh, screen sharing here and pull up another powerpoint where i've got that um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Give me just a second. And no, that's fine. I can fill it up. Fill up the time. Where you're looking at that? The the rates I quoted were the 24 pay period for the 23.95 plus the three bureau ID shield. Yeah. So that three bureau adds five dollars a month. Is that correct? Correct. I believe. Yeah. Yes. So on a on a 24 pay period, oh, 24 is just semi monthly, so it's twice a month. So it would be 250 added to the uh, other rates that I'm about to show. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, we'll check that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I was just uh, converted the numbers, not exactly sure. Okay, so y'all should be able to see kind of on my screen here, these are 2019 rates. And I've got here the monthly rate for like the normal monthly rate and then I've got the large group rate here on the right as well and remember that large group rate you can offer to any size group 
So it does not have to have, you know, 100 employees or 2,000 employees. There's been different rules in the past. I could offer that to a 10-man group if I chose to, but my commissions are significantly smaller when I do that. So I need to be careful. I don't want to give away the farm here. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong, by the way, with offering the regular rate, the, 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 the rate on the left there. Bill Stovall was talking about that. Um, last week, well, it wasn't on this training, but it was on a call that we were on. Um, there's nothing wrong with offering the standard rate. That is the standard rate. Don't feel obligated to offer the lower rate just because it's available. Um, remember, this is a business, and in a, in a business, if a car dealership offered their bare bottom price every time they sold a car, they just wouldn't stay in business very long. And I want you to give people a good deal, but I also want you to stay in business for a long time. And you need to cover your costs, and you need to to, to have income, and you need you know that, that's all part of it. And and even though your cost for the enrollment, you could probably cover that even with the commissions from a large group rate. If you were buying pizzas, you know, for a lunch and learn or something like that, that's not the only cost. It's your time involved as well. And if 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 this enrollment is the result of two weeks of activity, it's that time that I'm looking at that we need to make sure that we're covering that cost as well. Um, and so be smart about it. You don't need to feel like you have to offer that lower rate. Most of the time, we're going to offer the rate on the left. The lower is really kind of the exception to the rule, or at least that's my opinion. Um, but this, these are the rates on the left. And then again, this does not include the three bureau uh, that's a, I believe, a five dollar addition on the monthly, uh, five five dollars a month is what someone would pay for that. And so, um, so we, you know, to get to uh, to get to weekly, for example, you would take these monthly times them by twelve to get the uh, to get the annual, and then divide by fifty two. Doris was using an example where it was 24 pay periods. Mm -hmm. And that's great because that's easy. You just take monthly divided by two. And then that's the same thing. Now you could uh, you could get there other ways, but the easiest way, if, you, if they're paid twice a month, that's different than every other week. But if they're only paid twice a month, then you just take that monthly divided by two. But these, these are, Dave, to answer your question, these are the standard rates here. Uh, you heard Mike talk about the 3390 for the family combo. That's the that's the large group rate for that family combo. And um, and uh, if you're not offering the large group rate, 30 3890 would be that rate. So, and and I do need I do need uh, I need you to be comfortable with these. I need you to be familiar with these. I'm talking now to everyone. Uh, because these are these are the rates that we are going to bring into a decision maker, and obviously their employees as well. And there's nothing wrong with offering, a, you know, a three bureau. Uh, I mean, that, I said there's nothing wrong. There's everything right about that, if that's what you decide to do for that group. Um, you know, there the the advantage of offering larger priced products is it also gives you more premium dollars that counts towards executive director and senior director, uh, performance club, and everything else. Um, obviously, we want to be smart with that as well. So if, if the presentation that, you know, that Doris was doing, I would assume is probably, if she's adding that $3 a month, that's probably people that are, that are paid pretty highly. If she was talking to the minimum wage employees, she probably wouldn't add the the, uh, the the three bureau plan, and she might even break that down and say it's just this much much for the legal. <laughs> and she did some of that, by the way, where she broke it down, and the sheet that she used kind of breaks it down. Um, if they're if they're high paid uh, employees, like Mike goes into the office workers, and he might just say it's thirty three ninety a month, or it's eight ninety eight a week, or or that's a seven eighty two a week. For the whole shebang, and maybe that doesn't break that down. You can make that call, but again, that's one of those areas where we've got to be fluid and flexible. Uh, any any other thoughts or comments, Doris, that you have on that? Um, no, no, I don't. Um, no, but you're absolutely right. Right, like I have a, I'm going into a cleaners on Thursday. I am not offering them three bureau. 
right? Yeah, I'm right. Them on zero. So definitely yeah. depending on the, the income of the, the staff. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all just part of it is making decisions based on the group that you're talking to. Well, uh, Tracy Wright Owen, I've got good news or bad news. I don't know what, what it is, but uh, but I but we're out of time today, so I don't know if we got you to where we could hear you or not. But are you there, Tracy? I am. So so again, yeah. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. Uh, maybe a little bit that's of a okay. relief. I don't know. But but, uh, but we're out of time. Are you okay if maybe we start with your presentation next week? Would that be okay? Absolutely. It sounds great. All right. Well, thank you for being flexible. Speaking of being flexible and fluid. Thank you for being flexible with us on that. And again, I just want to thank Tracy and Doris and Mike for being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to, you know, that that's not an easy thing. I've always said, if you can make a presentation in front of your peers, you can make a presentation in front of any group. Uh, but, but these are the hardest presentations that we that we make. And, and, and yet they were all three very willing uh, to do that. And I just want to thank them for that. Our final week is next week, and uh, the final week of this advanced training. And uh, we'll start next week with uh, Tracy's presentation. Um, and then I've got about an hour and 15 minute uh, training that we'll do to kind of round that up, uh, round that out next week and, and uh, complete our advanced training. The topic of next week's training is, um, is earning a six figure income. And we're going to uh, revisit that. I know that we broke that down, kind of what that action plan could look like, but I, I really want to dive into, um, you know, what's required. What is it that separates the people that earn a six-figure income and the people that just want to earn a six-figure income? Because everybody wants to, but what is it that actually takes people to that level where they, they really are? Uh, don't forget to report your activity. Uh, you, you all have been doing just a fantastic job of that, I was looking at those numbers uh, this morning. Um, uh, David Fizitao, who, who asked that question, as has I think eclipsed everyone. Although uh, Jennifer Strobal, Kazim uh, Muhammad, um, uh, Marguerite in New Mexico, there are several others that are right there with him as far as reporting for every day. Some of you have missed some days. You can go back and, and report for those days as well um but but again thank you to all of you for for reporting that those are one-on-one -on -one conversations that i'm having with people looking at those numbers we won't necessarily do that on this on this webinar but i'll continue to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations and uh, look at those numbers and identify if there might be an area where you could improve or everything looks good you just need to keep on going and we can work on that offline one-on-one uh, -on -one. again a huge thank you to tracy and Doris and mike uh this morning for sharing and thank you to each of you for being on here. Uh, God bless you. Let's go out and make it a fantastic week, folks.